Absolutely. Josh, thank you so much for coming on, man. This means a lot. Seriously, we... Yeah, we're like, recording. Are we recording? All right, I'm going to shut up. Go ahead, Josh. See ya. <laughs> Anyways, real, real, real quick introduction for people watching the recording. My name is Josh Coates. I'm on the John Maxwell team. I work with a lot of Beachbody coaches. Thanks for watching. Awesome. So tonight I'm going to talk to you about recruiting. Um, but I want to go into... So here's what I like to do. I believe that every valuable training has three things, okay? If you're a coach with a big team, please write this down. Inspiration, information, and implementation. Inspiration first, because we have to deal with what's up here first, okay? What's going on on the inside always impacts the actual action steps. So you always have to deal with people's mindset. Then we give the information. In other words, the steps that we actually want people to do, whether it be the scripts, whether it be the, the, the specific action steps. And then there's implementation, which means we give some type of an assignment for people to actually go do what they learned. I always say if there is no homework, all we did was have a good chat. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't really care so much about having good chats as much as I actually want my business to grow, right? I want my business to grow. I want to help more people. I want to make more money. I want to live a better life, right? Isn't that all of our goals? So you've got to have all three of those things to have any type of successful training. Too many people load you up with information but never take the time to inspire you. Or they tell you to go do a bunch of stuff but they don't give you information on how to do it. Or they give you some incredibly inspiring story but then they never tell you how to actually apply that to your own life. All three of those fail. We've got to have all three. So I want to walk you through some specific steps to inspire you, but then to give you some very, very good information on how, what to do, and then I want to give you a homework assignment. Okay? Everybody ready for some homework tonight? I hope you are. You, you better come ready to work. Okay? I'm going to work you. So first of all, I need you to write this, these three words down. The three words are be, do, have. Be, do, have. These three words tell the story of true success. And I want to teach you how to have true success, okay? Whether it be with recruiting, challenge packs, whatever. I promise I'll bring it back to recruiting in the end. But I need you to understand this formula first. Because so many people in our country specifically, I'm sure Canada struggles with the same thing. I can't say from experience because I've never been there. But the culture specifically of the states is we want to have something first. We want to have bigger houses, have nicer cars, have six-pack abs, have whatever that is without actually doing anything. And that doesn't happen, guys. Unless you buy a lottery ticket and happen to be the one in a million that actually wins, you don't get to have something without doing something. And most of the time, you will fail to do something if you have not first become something. You see, people say, if I could have, let's say, a, a diamond rank, if I could have an elite rank, if I could have a um, top 10, then that would cause me to be successful. And then I would be willing to do the things that top coaches do. If that is your attitude and your approach to business, you will never be successful because the truly successful people decide to be the person first. In other words, they believe on the inside that they're already successful before it ever shows up in success club, before it ever shows up in elite points, before it ever shows up in rank advancements. They believe on the inside that they are a successful person, which causes them to do successful things, which causes them to finally, eventually, with time, have success. So I want to walk you through these three steps, the be, do, have. Because the first problem we have, like I mentioned earlier, is a bunch of people that want to have something and they never do anything. And here's the thing. We love to give these people a hard time in our posts when it comes to health and fitness. We love to say things like, so many people out there that say they don't have time for fitness when what they really should be saying is it's not a priority. Have you ever seen those posts? 
Next time you feel like saying, I don't have time, try instead saying it's not a priority. And we love throwing out things like this and kind of like slapping people in the face. Like, come on, you're not going to lose weight. You're not going to get healthy if you're not willing to do something, right? People don't want to invest in a challenge pack. And we're like, we get pissed out. You know, what do you mean you don't want to invest? How you expect, you told me just now that your doctor told you you're going to die if you don't change something. Your kids are, are you know, you're, you're not having time with your kids. They're not enjoying your kids. And you're not willing to spend $150 to change all that. Are you freaking kidding me? And we get so upset and we get so stressed out about people who are not willing to invest in themselves for their health, right? Am I right? But then we turn around and make the same lousy excuses about our business. I don't have time to work my business. I'm just not motivated. I'm so busy. I have this going on. I have that going on. Well, I just can't seem to find the energy we hopefully, I say we, I, I'm not a coach, but I mean, I love to work out and I do all the beach body programs. We tell people all the time, you got to put in the work if you want to get the results. In fact, I think we also like to make fun of some of the other companies out there that promote things like just taking a pill or, or just drinking a drink or, or, just wrapping yourself up with something. We like to tease these people because they're not promoting the work part of it, right? When Carl Deichler introduced P90X to the world, he said, hey, how about everyone in the world, have you ever thought about doing something crazy? Have you ever thought about just seeing how many push-ups and pull-ups you could do in an hour? Have you ever thought about just having Tony Horton kick the crap out of you for an hour every single day? The rest of the world, it's funny, Mike Ryan was telling me the story yesterday. Carl Deichler was the creator of 8-Minute Abs. And he went to the company that put out that, um, that product and said, hey, I want to do a one-hour-a-day workout. And they were like, that's the stupidest thing we've ever heard. We're not going to sell that. We will sell programs that are like eight minutes, maybe 10 minutes tops. We want something simple and easy that everyone can do that doesn't intimidate anybody. And Carl said, well, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to like do this thing for real. And so he had to go out and get investors to put money into his own company to create something called P90X because no one else in the world believed that anyone wanted to do anything extreme. They just wanted to throw out simple, easy, let's take it easy on everybody. Let's not be too hard. And Carl said, no, I want to do it the right way. And we pride ourselves in this company in doing it the right way, right? Work out, eat clean, and drink Shaco. Not just one, or not just, one not just drink Shaco, right? But then when it comes to our business, something gets lost. We're no longer willing to do the things to get success like we were in our health plan. We're willing to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to work out, but then we don't hit success club. We don't recruit coaches and we don't rank advance because we don't have time because we don't have energy because we're just not motivated because we're just not feeling it this much. Cause uh, I don't know. Nobody's just really saying yes. I mean, like, I feel like, so, well, someone was telling me that one of their coaches told them today um, that um, it, I just can't convince anyone to buy. I don't know what's going on, which is another way of saying they are at fault. I can't convince them, meaning there's something wrong with them. Guys, there's nothing wrong with people, okay? I've got clients like Brittany Powers hitting Success Club 100. You telling me people don't want to buy products? No. There's plenty of people out there that want to buy products. It's just that some of the people are doing the work and some of the people aren't. And I know that sounds really mean. I promise I'll be nice later. But I feel like when I get a chance to talk to people, I need to say the things that your upline coaches have really been wanting to say to you, but they can't because you'd get mad at them. And somebody needs to come in and give you some real talk and let you know if you want to be successful, you're going to have to work for it. 
When I was building my business from scratch, I was detailing cars eight hours a day. I would come home from, I mean, it's 115 degrees here in the summer in Oklahoma and it's humid as crap, just like it was when you were in Nashville for Summit last year. That's what it feels like in Oklahoma. No AC in the detail shop. Detailing cars all day, sweating my butt off. And I would come home and spend all night long on the phone trying to sign clients, trying to find people that would talk to me, trying. There were some nights where I literally took a 10 minute break to eat some dinner and then came back to my office and got back on the phone. Why? Because I knew I wanted a better life. And you better believe I was willing to work for it because I didn't want to detail cars the rest of my life. How many of you can raise your hand and say, Josh, I want a better life? Raise your hand. Come on, be honest. We all want a better life. Some of you, your motivation may be like me. I had a wife and three kids. I've got my fourth one on the way now, but at the time we had three kids. Um, we were a single income family, barely paying the bills. Actually, I, I don't even want to say we're really paying the bills. It was more like we were deciding which bill which bills we weren't going to pay kind of a deal. Like it was like every single month. Okay. Which bills do we have to pay or it'll get shut off that one? Okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and pay that one. Oh, there's, Oh, there's actually three bills that we have to pay this month so that they don't get turned off. Okay. We'll pay those three. We'll put off all the other ones till next month. Kids would get invited to birthday parties. We would, hope that the invitations would get lost so that we wouldn't have to take them to the party because if we did, we have to buy their friend a present. We didn't have money to be buying birthday presents for the friends. We barely had money to buy our own kids' birthday presents, more or less other kids. I didn't have any paid time off. So when my youngest son who went through three open heart surgeries was in the hospital three different times, I didn't have paid time off to be there with my son, which means one hand was holding my son's hand who is recovering from open heart surgery. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to pay the bills? I don't know about you guys, but that's not a good life. Would you agree? Now, it doesn't, I don't want to make it sound like I wasn't happy because I loved my wife. I loved my kids. I loved life itself. I was thankful and grateful for life itself. But that was not a good life. It definitely was not my best life. And I decided if I wanted a better life than what I had, I would have to be willing to do something that I'd never done. I'd be will, have to be willing to work harder than I'd ever worked. And yes, smarter also. You've got to be smart about it. You don't want to just like go mow 50,000 lawns a day. And it, I had to be smart and tap into my passion and find out what I loved. But I was willing to work for what I wanted in life. And most of you have learned that on your health journey. And I'm asking you to tap into that same level of commitment, to that same level of motivation, which motivation is really a gimmick, but you know what I mean, and decide that whatever you need to do to move your business forward, you'll be willing to do it. Why? Because your family deserves it. Your future deserves it. The world deserves it. There are people all around the world right now. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but there are people all around the world right now depending on your story. They don't relate to Megan's story. They don't relate to Dave's story. They don't relate to Brittany's story or Melissa McAllister's story. They will only relate to your story. No one else in the world can tell your story because no one else has ever been where you've been. The world needs you. And I always say that fear is the most selfish thing there is. The number one reason, in my opinion, that people are not moving their business forward is not because of a lack of motivation. It's not because of a lack of time. It's not because of a lack of energy. It's fear. And I say that because from what I found, about 80% of the business is not even doing one of the main vital behaviors. It's called invite, invite, invite. 
80% of the business is not even doing that vital behavior. And I'll tell you right now that 95% of your income is made up by that one vital behavior. The other vital behaviors are just setting up the invite. Being a product of the product is so that you have something to do genuinely. If you're not a product of the product, you got no business inviting people, right? That's not to say that you have to have a perfect journey, but you do need to have a journey. Your personal development is to keep your head on straight so that you can stick with it day after day. But inviting people to the business, whether for a challenge pack or a business opportunity, is 95% of how you get paid. How many of you get five messages a day from people based on your posts saying, I would love to sign up, where, where do I pay? Does anybody get messages like that? The only people I know of that get messages like that are people, um, some of my clients who have Instagram followings that are like 80,000 plus. But that is not the norm. That is only 1% of the company that has a following like that. The rest of you have to do what I did. And that's talk to a crap ton of people. That's the only way. And most people are avoiding that because what they really want is to make a really good post with bright turquoise and bright pink and word swag or Rona Design or Canva or PicMonkey. And they want to spend three hours creating the most incredible post that will somehow magically cause them to finally be discovered and have everyone on the planet reach out to them. And when that doesn't work, they sign up for Facebook ad training. If I could just understand Facebook ads, you know, people would just line up at my door and give me money. And when that doesn't work, they sign up for some branding training. If I could just brand myself just right, my pictures were just perfect and just, if, if, if I don't know, if I, maybe there's a color that I'm missing. Maybe there's like a color somewhere, like a cyan or something like that, that is like a magical color. And when people see it, they just automatically respond. And people are signing up for all of these different trainings that have nothing to do with the vital behaviors. I run training groups myself. I don't have anything against training groups, but all of my training groups are based on doing your vital behaviors. If you are trying to do some type of external training that supposedly gives you some secret magic sauce or trick beyond your three vital behaviors, I'm going to tell you right now, you're wasting your money. Someone is literally stealing your money by convincing you that something other than the three vital behaviors will grow your business. I know there's four now. The, the Carl added a fourth one. It's recognition. But my point is this. You want to grow a business? You got to talk to people, man. And I'm going to give you some very specific ways on how to do that today, okay? And I'm going to break some of your mindsets that have been holding you back from talking to people, okay? Raise your hand. Be honest. Just be honest right here, okay? This is Philly, Philly fusion here. We're, we're, we're family, right? Be honest. How many of you have dealt with a fear of inviting, whether it be for challenge packs or the coaching opportunity? Raise your hand. Okay, there's, there's a couple people just as I had kind of suspected. It's a common thing. It's, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. I promise we all have a fear of inviting. To this day, I fear inviting people. But I have a couple things going on up here that have helped me to face that fear that I'm going to teach you here in a minute, okay? So number one, people do not have what they want because they do not do what it takes, okay? But sometimes... We have run into this situation with people that are actually doing everything we said and they're still not having results. And when this happens, we have to backtrack to the B. Remember, B, do, have. If you are doing everything and not having the right results, I have to wonder what you believe. B is short for believe. I have to wonder what you believe about yourself. See, I would be willing to bet money that every single person on this call believes in Shakeology, believes in Autumn or Sean T or Tony. I mean, everyone has like their trainer that they like really love, right? Mine is Sagi and Tony. I love that. I, 
I love those two. I can't stand Sean T because I hate cardio. I, I seriously want to punch the guy in the face when I hear his voice because I hate cardio. I hate burpees. I, I can't stand Sean T. I'm sure he's a very nice person, but I don't want to work out with him ever, which sucks because when my wife gets this baby out, she wants to do Insanity Max 30 with me. And because she's given birth to four of my children, I feel a little obligated to do it with her. It's going to suck, but I'm going to have to do it. But I know you believe in the products and I know that you believe in the company because you've seen enough people have success that I think most of you believe that the company itself actually works. The business model actually works. But here's what you don't believe. Most of you on a daily basis ask yourself, can I really make this work? I've seen them have success. I've seen my upline or my upline diamond or somewhere in your upline or national wake up calls. You've seen people having success, but you wonder, do I really have what it takes to be successful? I'm not as pretty as her. Or I'm not as fun as him or I'm not as outgoing or I'm not as whatever, right? And you really, really wonder, do I have what it takes? And so no matter what you do, you constantly are doing out of a wrong belief. Which means the things you do don't sound the same and they don't look the same, even though you think they do. And you can even take somebody else's script and put it with your photo and it doesn't work because someone else used that script with confidence behind it and with a big old huge fat smile on their face. And they're like, ah, and I always tell people, I can tell you whether or not you believe in yourself just by looking at your selfies. And I know that sounds crazy. It does. But I swear to you, you look at a top coach's selfie, she can be sitting in the front seat of her car, just got done working out. And they're like, I mean, big, huge, fat smile, like light glowing from their eyes. And you look at a lot of other people's selfies and they're like, I just got done. The, the, the text says, I just got done working out. So glad I got that in first thing. What a great workout I got in. And then you're, and then you're posing in front of the camera like this. And people are going, what? Are you sure you got your, are you sure you're glad you got your workout in? Because I don't think you're actually glad at all. In fact, I, I wonder if you hate yourself based on that picture right there. In fact, I've even seen people, this is, this is not made up, guys. I've seen people post before and after pictures where they look more depressed in the after picture than they did in the before. Now, they've lost weight. You can tell that they had an outward transformation, but they 100% did not have the inward transformation, which is the most valuable part of this entire process. And I always joke that you can take a top coach and a top coach will post a before and after a side by side and say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I worked my butt off this, this last month. I lost one pound and half an inch in my waist. And I'm so excited about this progress. If you would like to join me on my journey, if you want you know, to experience what I'm experiencing, comment below and I'd love to chat with you. And then we have other coaches and their post sounds more like this. So I know you can't really tell much of a difference. And I know that, um, I know I didn't lose much weight and I mean, I don't really look much better, but I've been working out and I might have a challenge group that maybe starts up um, next week. And if you might want to join me, it's possible that I, might be willing to message you and I can talk to you about maybe signing up. I'm really sorry. It's not that much of a transformation. I was only able to lose 30 pounds this week. Ah. And they're like, hi, it's like, what? You freaking lost 30 pounds this week. 
and you're apologizing that your transformation is not that great. Now, I know that's a little unrealistic. Nobody's really losing 30 pounds a week, but I think you get what I'm saying. I've talked to people so many times, and they're like, Josh, I don't, I just, I don't know what to share about on social media because I haven't had a big transformation like some of the other coaches. And so, I, you know, what kind of transformation did you lose? Tell me about it. I want to hear about whatever it was. Well, I mean, I only lost 35 pounds. What? 35 pounds is a freaking incredible transformation. Are you kidding me right now? See, the problem is they saw one person who lost 150 pounds, so they don't think they have a good transformation. Come on, guys. Comparison is the greatest thief. It's the greatest thief of joy. It's the greatest thief of everything, man. Your journey is your journey. I don't care if you lost five pounds. That's something that someone else needs. I don't care if you gained five pounds because you were working out with Sagi and you toned up and actually put on muscle. That's something to be proud of. But you don't believe on the inside. And so everything that comes out is questioning, doubting. And every good salesperson, I'm sure you guys have heard this a thousand times on the National Wake Up Call, is not selling a product. They're selling themselves. If you believe in yourself enough, I mean, you could sell pencils. You could literally sell paper. Like, who uses paper anymore? Come on, I don't. I have a few sheets of paper over here, but I mean, come on. You can sell anything if you believe in yourself. If you don't believe yourself, I can give you the greatest product on the planet and you still can't even find a way to sell it. Why? Because you're not selling yourself. People don't believe in you. On the John Maxwell team, we're taught that there's three ways, three things you have to have in order to make a sale. People have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you. And they may know you and they probably even like you, but if you don't believe in yourself, there's no way in the world they trust you. Why would they spend $150 to join a, a workout or challenge group or, or to sign up as a coach under someone who can't even decide if they're sold on it? And when they don't see the belief in your eyes, they wrongfully believe that you don't believe in your products or, or whatever it is you have to offer, but the truth is you just don't believe in yourself. And so the only way you are ever going to properly do and properly have is if you believe the right thing about yourself. And in fact, my mentor on the John Maxwell team, Christian Simpson, he says this, the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is not your level or amount of potential. It is simply your awareness of your potential. Did you catch that? In other words, we all have the same amount of potential. Every single one of us. There is no lack of potential. I personally believe in God, and I believe that God gave every single one of us every single thing we would ever need to be successful. If you don't believe in God, that's okay. I still believe you have potential. It's not a religious thing. It's just I believe people are incredible, absolutely incredible, every single one of you. I wouldn't even be here tonight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be spending my night here with you if I didn't believe in you. But the difference between you having or not having success is your awareness of that potential. So let me hit on just a few things, and then I want to go into some specifics about recruiting, okay? There are two ways we believe what we believe about ourselves. That's emotional experiences and repetition, okay? Everything you believe about yourself has been created through emotional experiences or repetition. Now, I don't have time to go into all of that tonight because I want to give you some good recruiting tips. But basically, my point is 
if you don't believe in yourself, it's because you've either, one, had some really tragic emotional experiences in your life, whether that be, you know, with a relationship, um, you know, maybe some things that happened to you as a kid, or you've had a repetition of something happening over and over or someone saying over and over that you're not worthy of success or that you're not capable of success. Now, maybe you've been, you know, fired from three different jobs. That's a repetition telling you you're not worth it. Maybe you got bad grades your whole life and that repetition wired you to think that you're not smart enough. A lot of us, the health journey, maybe you, you put on weight repeatedly and for some reason you've convinced yourself that that's how you'll always be, whatever, whatever it is. The only way to change what you believe about yourself is to use emotional experiences and repetition to your advantage, which is why you should be on every team call. You should be at Summit. If you're in Christine Dwyer's downline, you should go to Platinum Edge. If your team has a retreat, you should be at the retreat. If you are struggling to believe in yourself, you need to find a way to get into every positive emotional experience you can possibly get in because the emotions of that experience have a way of cutting through into your belief system and creating a belief you've never had before. Every time I go to a big time event like that, I swear I walk away believing something about myself that I never ever even realized before. Last time I was at my live John Maxwell training event, I went there with a couple specific goals. I left with goals that I'd literally never even thought of before because I wasn't even aware that that potential existed on the inside of me. I became aware of something brand new and set some goals that put my old ones to shame. And now I'm working toward those goals. The other thing is repetition, which yes, Philly Super Saturday, be there. Gosh, Super Saturdays, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and say, you guys are so freaking blessed to have something every three months where you can come together for an emotional experience like this. Have incredible speakers, have energy, have community. Super Saturdays, 100% are a must go to. 100%. I think they, they usually cost, what, like $20? Come on. How are you going to not show up for that? How are you going to not show up 20 bucks to in person be around some of the most successful people in the business and walk away with more energy than you've ever had before to live your best life? 20 bucks? I mean, that's, come on. We have all spent $20 at Starbucks just this week and it's only Tuesday. Find a way to get to Super Saturday. I'm not there. This is not a promotion for myself, okay? I'm not there. I will be one day, but I'm not at this next one, okay? Find a way to get there. Just throwing that out there. The other thing is repetition. You better be doing your personal development every single day. And let me challenge you to make sure that your personal development is what you need and that you're not just reading a book that gives you goosebumps and makes you pat yourself on the back. You need to be reading a book that challenges you. Does that make sense? And the other thing I highly suggest is daily affirmations. You need to be saying out loud the things that you want to believe about yourself to help undo all of the negative things you've ever said in your life and all the negative things other people have said about you. I heard a preacher a long time ago say that you are your own prophet. And what he meant by that is there's something about words coming out of your own voice coming out of your own mouth that you will believe more than anything else. And there's something about, I'm telling you guys, there's something powerful that happens when you say out loud the things that you want to believe. And most of us have spent our whole life using that against ourselves. We spent our whole life cutting ourselves down, saying stupid stuff like, oh, I just look so fat today. What? You literally just told yourself to believe that you're fat. Now, why would you want to believe that even if it happens to be true at the moment in the mirror? That's not something you want to believe about yourself. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm always late. I'm such a loser. You're literally programming yourself to believe those things about yourself. 
That's ridiculous. Take time every single day to say some positive things about yourself. I say my goals out loud every single day, the things that I want to accomplish. And then I also have some very specific, for me, since I'm a religious person, I have some very specific positive scriptures that I say. But if you're not religious, it's okay. Go to your favorite books. You can literally right now Google motivational quotes, hit the image button, and a whole bunch of images of motivational quotes. Go find your favorite five ones, write them down, and just say them about yourself every single day. I'm telling you, it will change your life forever, okay? So let's go into what you believe. Harry Potter is full of them. That's awesome. So let's go into what you believe about recruiting and what's held you back from actually recruiting coaches. Let me turn my heater off real quick. Sorry, I got a little space heater going in here because it's kind of cold in Oklahoma today, kind of weird. But I want to go through a few things that you have probably – believed about recruiting that has held you back okay number one i bet a lot of you have believed i can't recruit because i'm not a successful coach has anyone ever thought that and you think if i'm not a successful coach aren't i kind of a hypocrite to invite people to the business opportunity and pretend that I can train them and pretend that I can help them live a successful life. Anybody ever thought that? So here's my favorite thing that I love, 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 love to do. How many people on this call tonight are certified health and fitness nutritionists or, or personal trainers? Raise your hand. If you are a health and fitness expert. Okay. I see two. Keep it up. Keep it up. Two hands on page one. And that's about as far as we go there. Two pages, two hands on, on page one. So we have two health and fitness experts on here, unless I missed them. Okay, you can put your hand down. Thank you very much. You are proving my experiment as always. How many people on this call have helped someone lose weight? Anybody? Now that's weird. Because I see a lot of hands. I mean, I see a lot a whole freaking lot of hands of people who say they, okay, you can put them down, who say they are not health and fitness experts. Somehow you managed to help people lose weight. What the heck did you do? If you're not a health and fitness expert, how you can, you can only help people if you're an expert. That's what I thought, right? That's why you're not recruiting coaches because you can only help people if you're successful yourself, right? Oh, wait, did we miss something there? Do you know how you've helped people lose weight? You introduced them to a good product and then you gave them accountability and support. Am I right? What 90% of you on this call told me is you're not trained to actually know the specifics of how to properly work out and eat healthy. You're not, you're not properly trained in that. And yet you help people lose weight every single day because you give them a great product and your only job is to give them accountability and support. Can I tell you how to help coaches become incredibly successful? Can I give you a quick tip on this? You introduce them to the right product or training, which I'm pretty sure your upline may have. Some of you are a part of some really awesome, incredible uplines. If you're not, there's this thing called YouTube. It's pretty spectacular. A lot of stuff on there. And then you give them accountability support. Do you need to be a beach body expert? Do you need to be a top 10 coach? You mean elite? No. It doesn't take a successful person to lead someone towards success. It takes a person that will support you and give you accountability. Am I a successful beach body coach? I'm not because I'm not a beach body coach, right? And yet six of my clients went first time elite last year. One of my clients went top 10. And now I work with a total of like five different current or former top 10 coaches who are all having greater success. From working with me. Am I a beach body expert? Nope. What do I do? I give people accountability and support. Isn't that crazy? And I get paid a lot of money to just give people accountability and support. You 
can do the same thing. Does that make sense? Does that, nod your head if that makes sense. Nod your head if you agree now that it is absolutely ridiculous to assume I can't help people become successful because I'm not successful yet. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay. How about this? I don't want to be weird and salesy. Isn't it weird and salesy to talk about the business? Nod your head. Nod your head if that's you. You're like, I don't want to be weird and salesy. Nod your head. Come on. Give me, give me some face energy here, people. Is, 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 it, is it like freezing cold in Philly today or what? You guys are like faces like frozen over. Come on. Give me, give me some smiles. Okay. If you have struggled to think that it's too awkward, too weird, too salesy to talk about the business, a lot of you actually used to think that about talking about Shakeology and used to think about talking about that with challenge packs. So let, let me deal with you first, okay? Everything in life is weird and awkward when you first do it. How many of you rode a bike the very first time you sat on one? Anybody? Oh, that's weird. So what you're saying is you got on a bike, it was weird, it was awkward, you probably fell, probably scuffed up your knees, a few of us scuffed up our faces. It was a bad experience. But yet we did it enough times that we eventually naturally evolved and became good at it, right? How many of you, when you first started working out, it was easy and comfortable? If so, you were not working out with beach body trainers because uh, there isn't a single program that's easy and comfortable. Am I right? So what happened was you had to work through the pain, right? And eventually it paid off for you. Am I right? It is the exact same way with every stage in life. It is weird and it is awkward and it feels gross to do something outside of your comfort zone, no matter what it is. But you did work out, even though it was awkward, even though it was weird. Why? Because you knew the desired outcome and you knew there was no other way to get to the desired outcome. Am I right? Now, how many people raised their hand and told me they wanted a better life? How many people was that? I, I, I think it was everybody. That's kind of weird, right? All of you told me you want a better life. Can I tell you how you get a better life? By getting really used to feeling weird, awkward, uncomfortable, salesy, gimmicky, scammy. All these weird, crazy words is how you're going to have to feel the rest of your life if you want to give your family what they really deserve. But let's go one step further just to put your mind at ease because a lot of you, that did not make you happy. You're a little pissed off at me right now because you don't want to feel like that the rest of your life. But let me ask you this. How many of you have had your life changed already by Beachbody? Raise your hand. Okay, a few people. How many of you know people that are struggling with the depression, the lack of confidence, the lack of belief. How many of you know people that are struggling with all the crap that you used to struggle with before Beachbody? And maybe you're still struggling with it, but it's gotten a lot better. Raise your hand. Now, let me ask you this. If you don't help them and you don't reach out to them, who will? Who will? Are any of you pissed off that somebody reached out to you? Huh? Are any of you upset that someone offered the opportunity to have your life changed? Probably not, or you wouldn't be here tonight, right? Will there be people that hate your guts? Sure. But to be honest, we overthink it a lot. And most of us, when we signed up, we said something like this. If I could just change one life, it would be worth it. Am I right? How many people said that? Come on, I, I'm inside your guys' heads. I know what you think. I know what you say. I'm a psychic over here. I'm not a life coach. I'm a psychic, okay? You said, I just want to change one life. One life is depending on whether or not you offer the coaching opportunity. In fact, probably two lives, three lives, four lives, five lives, even more than we could even count tonight. People right now, as we speak, 
are struggling with depression, are going through divorce, are fighting with their kids, have lost all sense of purpose, all sense of confidence. We have women who have gotten so caught up in being moms and being wives, they don't even remember who they are anymore. We're sitting around right now with the answer while they're sitting on the couch struggling. And we don't want to offer the answer to them because we're afraid someone might think we're salesy. Now, do you hear how ridiculous that sounds? Now, I get it. In here, it feels crappy. But once we say out loud what's, what it really is, it makes a little bit more sense, doesn't it? That you don't just need to reach out and offer people the coaching opportunity because it will change your life and give you a greater income and help you live a life by design. You need to do it because someone else depends on you. And I would bet that there are a lot of people who depend on you. I don't like the word fate because I think the word fate is like a scapegoat for people. Well, I guess that just wasn't my fate. And we use it as like a cop out and like not have to do anything. And there are a lot of people right now sitting on their couch waiting for fate, waiting for fate to somehow magically knock 30 pounds off and put a smile on their face and make them feel good about life again. And I'm telling you right now, fate is not going to happen for them. You will reap what you sow. You put, a, you put 5,000 calories a day in your body. I don't care what fate is. You will gain weight. Am I right? You don't take care of yourself. You don't live out your purpose. You don't live out your passion. And I don't care what fate says. Your life is not going to be very fun. People are depending on us, not on fate. You have the opportunity to change someone's fate. The question is, will you do it? Will you have the guts to do it? So let's talk about one more reason that people are held back from recruiting. And that is that they don't think that they're very good leaders. How many people have ever been scared to recruit because you're afraid you're not a good leader? Anybody ever been afraid of not being a good leader? And to that, I love again to take it back to the bicycle analogy. Nobody was ever good at anything until they failed and failed and failed and failed. And if you don't start somewhere with someone, you'll never be a good leader. How many of you studied the bicycle? Did you, did you sit around and measure it and try to figure out the dimensions of it and try to decide, hmm, maybe if I pedaled it at such and such speed, it would change the, uh, I, I can't even like talk like geek talk because I'm not smart enough, but there's no way to study a bike and figure out how to ride it. You have to get on and fall on your face. And leadership is the same way. John Maxwell calls it the law of process. He says, a leader is not made in a day, but rather one day at a time. A healthy person is not made in a day. Would you agree? But rather one day at a time. A successful marriage is not made in a day. How many of you said, I do? Thought everything was great until you got home from the honeymoon and then you realize, oh crap, this is not what I pictured. <laughs> it was like, you're a different person than you were two weeks ago. What happened? A good marriage is not made in a day. It's made one day at a time. Being a good parent doesn't happen in one day, right? Some days you love them, but man, you kind of hate. <laughs> I don't want to use the word hate because that's a really brutal word, but you those of you that have kids know what I'm talking about. You love them, but sometimes you really, really, really wish they had a really nice aunt you could send them home with, right? <laughs> Someone just said teenagers. I haven't even got to have teenagers, man. I'm, I'm scared about having teenagers. But being a good parent happens one day at a time. If you were determine how good of a parent you are based on one day in your life of being a parent. It could either be a really good day or one of those really bad days. Am I right? It's one day 
at a time. If you want to be a really good leader, let me just go ahead and tell you this. Find a way to fail as many times as you can so you can get those lessons out of the way and learn and become a good leader. I always like to tell people, I have a client list over here of the people that I've worked with for the last year. There's about 68 people on that list. Do I work with 68 people right now? Absolutely not. I would be freaking insane. I work with 20. 20 people. Which means in the last year, 48 people have decided they didn't want to work with me anymore. Now, some of them was because of money. Some of them it was because, you know, a few of them weren't getting the results that they wanted. All different reasons. I could look at that as I failed 48 people, or I could look at that as I have 20 people's lives that I've changed. Am I a bad leader because 48 people dropped off? I don't even think of it that way, to be honest. The way I look at it is those 48 people, either A, it wasn't the right fit for them, and if that's so, that's fine. Like I don't have a problem with that. Or B, they weren't willing to put in the work that it took. Did I fail along the way? Of course I did. I'm human. I'm human. I failed, of course. But I cannot look at numbers and stats and try to determine whether or not I'm a good leader. I have to keep taking it one day at a time. And every day I learn and grow, guess what? I teach what I'm learning and growing to other people. And guess what? Six months from now, I'll probably realize that everything I taught tonight was BS and I'll probably come up with a whole new system. I'm totally kidding, okay? I'm totally kidding. It's just, just a joke. But my point is we're all constantly growing and changing, and if we aren't, then there's something really, really, really wrong. The only way to be a good leader is to get started, okay? So how many of you say, Josh, okay, got my mind cleared a little bit, and I think I'm ready to recruit some people? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. I want to give you just a few tips on how to be a little bit more intentional about recruiting. Okay. You ready for it? How many of you post workout videos and workout pictures, stuff like that? Anybody? Okay. Now keep your hand up if you regularly post about the fact that you're a coach and looking for people for a business opportunity. A lot of hands went down. Here's the deal, guys. How do people know that you're hiring if you don't tell them? Now, I'm not saying that everyone should put up the big, now hiring, but I'm not talking about that. There is, a, there is a, a less tacky way to do it. But I always tell people this. People are running laps around my neighborhood all the time. I can tell they're in great shape. I can tell they exercise. I never run out the door to stop one of them to ask them if they can train me on how to build a successful business. Have you guys ever done that? Have you ever walked into the gym and saw some dude that's like all buff and jacked his like pecs are like popping out of his shirt and said, man, would you teach me how to build a successful business? I mean, I've been looking to make some extra money. I can tell you got huge pecs. Surely you can help me make money, right? Has anybody ever done that? No. We don't even tell people we have a business. And then we wonder why no one wants to talk to us about a business. You want to recruit coaches, you need to talk about the fact you have a business. And you can do both. I'm not saying to get rid of talking about your health and fitness because that's, that's part of the, the journey, right? That's part of what you're selling. But what you can do instead, yeah, you can steal it, Dave. It's all yours. You can steal this whole call. You can literally just uh, write the script and just, I don't care. Everything I give out is, is worth stealing because – I stole it from someone else. Let's be honest here. Um, you can post a workout selfie, and then you can say something like, I'm so thankful for the accountability group that I help run that helps keep me on track. Do you need more accountability? Being a health and fitness coach has been one of the greatest things I've ever done for my own personal journey and accountability. See how I literally brought up the business without, I mean, it wasn't like salesy or weird, but I did talk about it because people need to know I have a business, right? 
which makes it a lot less awkward when I do a call to action post. How many people do call to action posts at least once a week for challenge groups? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you do. Well, that, that, those hands should be way higher for this, but keep your hand up if you do a call to action post for the coaching opportunity once a week. And almost all of the hands went down. Do you see the point I'm trying to make here? My only point is this. Too many people in the company are only selling challenge packs because they're only intentional about selling challenge packs. Everything in life is what are you intentional about? I have way more people sign up for my training groups than I do for my one-on-one. -on -one. Why? Because I advertise my training groups way more than I do my one-on-one -on -one because my one-on-one -on -one is, is booked solid right now. It'd be stupid to even advertise it. What you talk about is what you will bring attention to. So many of you have become so comfortable with talking about your health journey, but you never talk about the business opportunity. How many of you start conversations, raise your hand, if you send invites out on a daily basis for challenge groups or free clean eating groups or some type of health and fitness group? Raise your hand. If you send out invites daily, okay? Keep your hand up if you send out invites on a daily basis to join the coaching opportunity. And again, almost all the hands went down. Do you guys see the point that I'm trying to prove? I like to say it like this. When you go into a conversation, remember that the business opportunity is just simply one more product we offer. That's it. It's just another product we offer. In fact, it's the greatest product we offer. It's the greatest one. Buy a challenge group and it will change your health and fitness. And there will be some, in my opinion, some mental and emotional changes as well because your health and fitness journey always changes the inside, right? Buy a challenge pack as a coach and you still change your health and fitness. You still get the inward transformation and you also get the outward transformation of finances. Oh, and by the way, it builds your character. Oh, and by the way, it builds up your leadership. Oh, and by the way, you have a whole new community of like-minded people. The business opportunity is the greatest product you have to offer. And what's funny, you guys want to hear what's really funny? This, this is what cracks me up. The number one objection that people give you is, I don't have the money. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what sales 101 is? Sales 101 is find the need and then offer the product. Sounds to me like everybody needs money. If I were a beach body coach and I was talking to someone about their health and fitness journey and then offered them the challenge back and they said, man, I would absolutely love to do that, but I just really don't have the money for it. <laughs> I would be like, ding, ding, ding. They don't have money. They need money. Well, tell you what, if you don't have money, I know, you know, that sucks. It, it's rough. Have you ever wondered about a way to make some extra money? You know how easy that was? Just a simple question. Have you ever wondered about a way to make some extra money? Actually, yes. We have college or student loans. We have debt out the butt because we bought two expensive cars and too big of a... Yes, I have thought of a way to make more money. I've considered going back to school. I've considered starting a business. I've can... Everyone in America has thought about how to make more money, right? But you can offer them an opportunity for 150 bucks to start their own business. Yeah, but they just said they don't have $150. No, 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 no. They said they didn't have $150 for their health and fitness. You heard I don't have $150. How many of you have one of these? Anybody got a smartphone? I got an iPhone. I'm a, I'm a big time Apple guy, right? Most people are paying over $100 a month for their cell phone plan. So we can what? Check Facebook and Instagram everywhere we go? You're going to tell me people don't have $150? That's BS. 
everybody has $150. Just not everyone is willing to spend $150 on what you have to offer. Maybe that's not their pain point as much as needing more money. And the business opportunity may be the product that they've been looking for. And even though, yeah, they want to have a health and fitness journey, it's very possible that the business is actually worth the $150 to them to have their own business. It's just that whatever, hammer and chisel wasn't really worth $150 to them. Everyone has money, guys. My wife told Brittany Powers she didn't have money. Tax return came around. My wife bought a challenge pack and signed up as a coach. Do you know what? I'm just going to be honest. We had the money. Now, we didn't think we had the money because we were broke and we were behind on bills, but we were still paying for our iPhones. We were still paying for our Starbucks. We were still paying for pizza on Friday nights. It's just that that $150 all at once was going to hurt a lot more than two cups of coffee, right? Everyone has the money, but you've got to find their pain. And the business opportunity is just one more thing to offer them, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Everybody okay? I know it's like 9 o'clock on Eastern time. Can you give me 10 more minutes? Can I have 10 more minutes? Raise your, nod your head if I can have 10 more minutes. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Right now, right here, I want you to write down five names of people that you've considered talking to about the business and haven't yet. Right here, right now, I want you to write down five names. I shouldn't see anyone looking at the screen unless you're using the internet. Five names. I want five names, okay? I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get that done. This is the most important part of the call, guys, okay? Action is the most important part. Ooh, that's nice, Megan. I like that picture you sent me. You like that? Your phone went off. I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you two. I like the one of you holding the Shaco cup. Right? That's subtle. Okay, that's the one. You going to do that one? Mm-hmm. I dig it. Thanks. Five names, five names. Let's play some music that YouTube won't get mad at us for. So annoying. Freaking YouTube, man. Everybody got their five names down? Got your five names? If you don't, pause for one second, okay? I'm going to give you a very, very simple script to use to message to these people, okay? We're going to do it right here. We're going to do it live, okay? we got to do it live while we got this energy, okay? And I'm going to type it up in the chat box here. Now, if you already have your own script that you use to send people, that's totally cool. You can use that. I'm not saying that my script is better than anyone else's. Okay, it's just something that I want to give you that's easy to use so that you can message some people. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to say, and I'm going to type it up here in the chat box so you guys can literally copy and paste it. Okay, but I'm going to say it out loud so you can kind of hear what I'm going through. Hey, how's it going? Wow, that was so strategic, Josh. Was just thinking about you today. You are such a positive person. I wanted to see if you'd ever wondered 
what I do as a health and fitness coach. You are already such a motivated person, or you could say such an energetic person, something like that. I think you would be a perfect fit. Does anybody not like hearing that, that, you're, that you would be a perfect fit for some, something? Would you have a few minutes to chat with me about it? If not, no worries. Just was thinking about you and wanted to know. That's it. Guys, I just literally made that up. Okay, so select all. Uh-oh, there we go. Select, give me a select option. Got a new MacBook and don't even know how to select all here. Uh, come on, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. So I don't, what, why am I trying to select all? I just need to hit enter. <laughs> I'm not copy and pasting it. I'm just hitting enter. There it is, it's right there. You guys can now select it and copy and paste it if you'd like to. If you have your own script, that's totally fine. If you don't like what I said, I don't care. Write something else. Add a few emojis if you want. Everybody loves emojis, right? And I want you right here, right now, okay? Without thinking about it, I want you to send a message, either my message or one of your own, but it's gotta be copied. This is the only rule, okay? Whatever message you send, you have to copy and paste to all five people. And the reason I say that is because if you don't, you will sit and you will think about it and you will scare yourself out of even sending the second message. In fact, you may not even ever get around to sending the first one because you'll spend 30 minutes thinking about what you should say, okay? So you ready? Grab my message if you need it or create your own. Copy and paste five times. You should be done in literally less than a minute because it's just copy and paste. Go. Go do it. Play a little jam in the background for you. Don't think, okay? Don't use your brain. Copy and paste. Don't type anything. If you do, I'll come all the way to Philly and kick your butt. Although I don't know if I should pick a fight with someone from Philly. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> Unless you guys fight the way you play basketball the last few years. What's going on, 76ers? That's enough. That is enough. <laughs> I let the first one slide. The second one, not so much. We just got the number one pick. We're good. Championships. Championships. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I hope so. I really do because I'm a huge basketball fan. And so I, I don't like to see any teams other than the Lakers just suck. 
The Lakers, they can suck. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. You didn't see, but the Lakers got the number two pick. No, so I, didn't see. I didn't see. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Cheating. <laughs> but the Lakers need more than one number two pick, man. They need, they need a lot. Okay, is everybody done? Has everybody hit copy and paste five times? Most people done? If not, you can finish when we're done here, okay? But here's, first of all, a lesson for everyone on this call or watching this recording that does team calls. I personally believe, I've just recently discovered this, I've been guilty of it myself, that we do way, way, way too much talking and not enough doing in this business. We have team calls, we have national wake-up calls. In, in all of these settings, we're learning stuff and never actually getting people right there with the energy, with the momentum to do anything. That's a problem because we've taught people that you always need to learn more and there's nothing really to do. So for those of you that do team calls, do me a huge favor. Please, please, please use the live energy and momentum of something like this to get people to actually do something. Whatever you're going to teach on, okay? Teach and then have time for actual implementation right there on the live call, okay? That's the first lesson, okay? The second lesson for everyone else is how many of you say, Josh, having this community and having this support made it easier for me to do something that I'm usually uncomfortable with? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I mean, a lot of you told me you weren't sending out coach invites, and yet all of you hopefully just did, right? So the other lesson is this, that we're always willing to do more when we have support and accountability. Now, what's funny about that is we should know that because we run challenge groups, right? But we often don't apply the same thing to our business. So here's the thing. I mentioned earlier that I run some training groups. All of my training groups that I run are specifically for beach body coaches to create the same support and the same accountability that you guys offer in your challenge groups before your business. And in these groups, I've specifically made them just for beach body coaches. They're all in your language. I have one group that's called Clarity and Focus. It's specifically for people who are trying to just get in the right habit of showing up every day. They say things like, I'm not motivated, I'm overwhelmed, I'm exhausted, I don't have time, I don't have energy. Get this thing called fog brain is what I call it, where you're doing 30,000 different things and never actually doing the right things. It's called clarity and focus. I have another group called The Art of Recruiting. It's my best seller. It's sold out every single month. I even have a client that paid for all of her PS coaches who hit Success Club to go through it. She's a top 10 coach, so she has a lot of PS coaches that hit Success Club, paying for her whole team to go through it because so many people in the company are missing out on being intentional about recruiting. I have another one called Believing in You, specifically for people that are struggling to find their inner belief, to have four weeks of getting intentional about doing the proper things on a daily basis to begin to believe in yourself. Wherever you're stuck at in your business, if you are not moving forward the way you want to, why would you not get extra accountability and extra support from someone who trains some of the top coaches in the entire business? Why would you not? Wouldn't it be silly not to? If you want to move your business forward, you're going to have to do things you haven't done before. And I promise you this, that all of my groups will always support the three vital behaviors. I will never have you spending three hours on creating an avatar or three hours on changing your hair color or editing your photos. It will 100% be based on the vital behaviors to work your business. If you do my training groups, you won't have to do my training group and then make time for your power hour. The training group will be your daily power hour. Does that make sense? It will never distract you from the business. It will just simply help you to implement the things in the business properly, okay? If you're interested in any of that, you can go to joshuacoats.com. Let me pop it in here for those 
It's J O for those of you watching the recording, J O S H U A C O A T S dot com. Joshua Coates.com. There's no E in my last name. E's in, E's in the last name of Coates is just silly. I don't know why people do it, but I don't. So you can go to Joshua Coates.com, get more info on my training groups. If you have questions about it, do me a huge favor, email me through the website, or you can message me through my like page on Facebook, which is Legacy Leadership. Okay? While you're there, if you're like, Josh, none of this is right for me right now, that's okay. Download my free ebook. I have a free ebook called The Mess Before Success, sharing my journey of how I got through the stupid messes in life to where I am today. So thank you, Megan, so much for letting me be here. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to hang out with me tonight. I appreciate it so, so much, Megan. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you, and I feel terrible. I have to apologize because I have an upgraded Zoom account, but I guess it was maxed out at 50, so we did have people that wanted to get on. So as soon as you can process that recording, shoot it to me so I can drop it in the page. Done. Done. Is there anything, Dave, Kara, Tiff, who else is on here, Sam, anybody else wants to add? or? No, that was amazing. Um, I was just thinking to myself, and I was – like texting other people. I was like, this is the best call that I've ever been on. And, uh, and it wasn't even like a team call, which is awesome. I'm glad Philly got it. So thank you, Josh, man. We're definitely, Philly is working on some events and we definitely want to have you out to Philly to spread even more knowledge because it's just awesome, man. Thank you so much. Good. Yeah. You're, you're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. Focus talk for us. That one's really good too. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. I forget. Oh, you did have me create an avatar, by the way. Remember that? My Bitmoji? You said. <laughs> yeah, well, if you don't have Bitmoji, you're just, you're not even an online entrepreneur. Oh, my God. My wife sends me that stuff all the time. I'm like, I, get, I know what you look like. I know what you look like. You don't have to send me something that looks like you. I put bags <laughs> under my eyes in my. <laughs> Bitmoji is like the greatest thing ever. I mean, if you're if you have to message fifty people a day like we do, at least add some sense of humor to it, right? Right. <laughs> the, so, Josh, the one thing that I when you were talking earlier, uh -huh. um, the one thing that came to my mind, and you were talking about how Philly, like everybody in this business, is so quick to promote the products but not promote the business side of it. Yeah. And I think especially when it comes to Philly, you know, and, and you know, nationally, everybody who commits to a 60-day pro program or a 90-day program does it from point A to point Z, gets results, right? And the same things happens in Philly. We get great results from these programs. Yeah. The only thing is, so, so because we get those results from the programs, we're so able to promote it because we have that proof. Yeah. But with the business, like especially when we're just starting, and even if you're not just starting, mm -hmm. we may not see that success. So we're scared to almost promote success to the business because the Philly market is, is like they, they you either it's good or it sucks. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I was thinking when you said that. So what, can you like yeah. elaborate on, on how to do yeah. it even if you aren't a five-star diamond? How do you find success in promoting yeah. it? I love it. I love, I, I love that you brought this up. I, I really do because I get a lot of coaches um, who say they don't know how to post about the business if they're not like Megan Ewaldson who posted about buying a brand new forerunner with her, with her beach body check. And yes, most beach body coaches cannot say that, right? But here's what you can say. Since I've signed up to be a coach, I have grown in my accountability. I've discovered my purpose. I've had more passion. I've made more friends and I've made a little extra cash. Now, tell me one American, North America, all of North America included, okay? All the states. I know Canadians hate it when I call it America. All the states and Canada. We're, this is all Philly, though. Thank God. Yeah. It's Philly. I can say America. Okay, cool. Sorry. In fact, when you say Canada, we actually get offended. I, have to, I, I like always have to backtrack because there's always like that one Canadian on the call. And they're probably watching this on YouTube right now. My, and my friend Fiona is probably pissed at me right now. <laughs> it just happens. We call it America. But uh -oh, the Canadians are coming forward. Oh, here we go. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. 
maybe I just maybe now I'm the bad guy. You're good. I'm the bad guy now. I should have stuck with my guns. I should have stuck with my guns. Well, here's the thing though. What North American <laughs> has never wanted more purpose in life, more accountability on their health journey, to feel like they're helping people and making a difference in the world? Oh, and by the way, making a little extra cash. We are literally plagued with a society who has no purpose and no passion goes to work every single day, working a job that they absolutely hate, or on the flip side of it, for those of you that are stay-at-home moms, like I mentioned earlier on the call, have become so consumed with being a mom, being a wife, being everything for everybody, that you've lost your sense of purpose, right? So many stay-at-home moms say things like this, I love my kids, I love my husband, but I just feel like there's something more. And that's okay. It's okay to feel like that. Ever, you all feel like that. It's just that only a few of you are actually willing to say it out loud, right? And if you can talk about the purpose part. Now, and again, how many of you sign up for Beachbody because you want to make a million dollars? Probably none of you. How many of you sign up for Beachbody because you said, I want to help one person? Almost all of you right? But then we think we can't talk about the business because we haven't made a million dollars. You didn't sign up for a million dollars, so why the heck would anyone else? The greatest selling point of this business is not the money. It's the purpose. That's something people, you know, I've, I've gone to church my whole life. At one point in my life, I volunteered probably 15 hours a week at my church. Why? Because of the purpose. There are people volunteering their time for a good purpose all over the country because what they do during the day is not serving that purpose. So if you haven't made a lot of money, guess what? It's okay. Talk about what Beachbody has done for you and offer that to people. And by the way, it's probably more valuable to them than all the money in the world. Does that help Dave? Does that answer it? That's so perfect. And I think it's exactly right on. I think, you know, everybody on this call right now, not one of them are millionaires. Not one of, I mean, maybe there's a couple that this is their full-time job. Yeah. And, you know, when we have Super Saturdays and we have, you know, 500, 600, 700 people there, if I stood in front of them and said, how many of you are regretting your, your decision on becoming a Beachbody coach? Right. None of them would raise their hand. And I think there's so much that you can gain even for yourself from being a beach body coach. And I think a lot of people forget that. So I'm glad you, you, you brought that up. Just even just, even if you don't make a dime in this company, the, what it does for you and the accountability for you. And, and even just that feeling of helping your spouse get in shape or helping your mom quit smoking or, or that, even that, just that stuff with beach body yeah. is so important. And it is what makes a great beach body coach. So yeah. it's great that you brought that up. It's so important. Cool. Cool. Good deal. Anything else, Meg? No, I think that's it. I mean, so like I said before, when I started working with Josh and I started doing more of the right like daily behaviors and just like the confidence and like the business building activities more so, <clears throat> I was able to build my husband in a very short amount of time to two star diamond and build my second CPC to one star diamond in like record time. And I really like a big shift in my mindset was I think what happens with coaches is they're either a new coach or they're an emerald coach and then diamond and the star diamonds just seem like light years away. And if you really just focus on going emerald again and again and again and again and again, and you make sure that you're doing the right daily behaviors, like what we just all did on this call, literally just sending that copy paste message and reaching out to the right people every day, suddenly you'll go from two coaches to four coaches to six coaches to eight coaches, but it's not going to happen if you don't do the right stuff. It's not going to just come to you. Diamond, star diamond, it's not just going to fall right into your lap. Like you have to like put the opportunity in front of the right people and be consistent about it. 
because the same way we need to be consistent with like our fitness and the challenge groups and, and that whole piece, they need to see us showing up every day to trust in us. They need to see us showing up every day, building business as well in order to want to go into business with us. I attract much better coaches now because I've been so consistent with my recruiting and my business building activities on Facebook for two years now. So when somebody comes to me, they're ready. They've been watching. They've been following me. They know I've been a coach for a long time. They know I'm a successful coach now. They know I started from scratch. They know I have the resources. And it's because I share that and I message about it every single day. And, and can I just add this, Meg? That hmm. Most of the successful coaches that I work with, their first year made almost no money whatsoever. If they hustled really, really hard, and I'm talking about doing the right daily activities like I talked about tonight, every single day, day in, day out, the second year, they made a little bit less than a full-time income. And then their third year, it went like six figures. Now, some people like Megan, it's, it's happened a little quicker than that. But for most people, the payoff year is the third year. If, if, if you do the right daily activities day in, day out. And for some of you that are newer, you're going, that sucks, three years. But I want to ask you to ask yourself the same thing I asked myself when I first started my business. I used to say myself to this every day that I'd come home sweating from the detail shop and just annoyed that I had to come home and work more. Even if I have to do this every single day for the next five years, wouldn't that be worth it to be able to live the rest of my life making a living off of my passion? Even if it took five years, wouldn't that be worth it? See, here's the problem is most of us are not thinking about five years from now. Most of us are thinking about five minutes from now. And if you asked your five year from now self, should I go all in? Or should I quit? Your five year from now would kick your butt for thinking about quitting. Because five years from now, you are not going to regret giving up one or two hours a day with your family if you were giving it up to do something that was for their good. Because most of you would be on Netflix, would be on Facebook, would be on Instagram. You can build a business, and if you're intentional about your time, still make time for your family. If you want to make time for your family, you will. But let me ask you this. Does your family deserve what you can see five years out? If so, then you need to say to yourself, I need to be the adult and understand that I need to make sacrifices each day to get to five years from now. Because otherwise, guess what? Five years from now is going to look just like what it looks like right now. And I would bet that most of you are not incredibly excited about your life staying exactly how it is right now for the next five years, or you wouldn't even be here tonight. So keep asking yourself. Don't, don't, look, at, don't look at what you get today. Don't look at Thursday's paycheck, okay? Looking at Thursday's paycheck is dangerous. Because the compound effect never pays off by Thursday. The compound effect says little things done daily equals great results. And most of us want to do a few things here and there and have it pay off Thursday. You've got to keep putting in the work and the effort day after day after day and remove yourself from the emotional attachment to the results, just like in your workout. How many of you take before and after pictures and measure every single day? That'd be ridiculous. Wouldn't that be ridiculous? Now, once a week, you might do that so that you can check up on your progress and make adjustments, right? But if every single day you're emotionally attached to what you see in the mirror, you're going to be depressed all the time because from today to tomorrow, your health journey hasn't made a lick of difference. But from today to 60 days from now, it has if you showed up every day. Am I right? Your business is exactly the same.
You got to put in the work and not worry about what the scale says today. Know that with time, it will pay off. Sorry, I know that's a whole other team call right there, but I just want to throw that out for people because I know that that's so hard. My first year, guys, my first year, I signed two clients and I made $500. Two clients, $500 my whole first year. That's horrible. But nine months into my second year, because I hustled, I quit my job and I tripled my income. By now, it's skyrocketed even from that. But it didn't happen in the short period. It happened over time. Okay? So if you suck right now, you feel like your business sucks and you can't do anything right, don't worry. I sucked too. We all sucked. Okay? It's not about, it's not about being good. It's about getting a little bit better. It's about doing the right things to get a little bit better until a little bit every single day turns into, holy crap, how did I get here? Do you ever have those days, Megan, where you wake up and you're just like, holy crap, how did I get here? Every day now. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it feels that way every day now. I'm like, oh my God, I really did that. I really did this. It's incredible. I've um, tripled my income as well. It's awesome. It's, awesome. it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And guess <laughs> what? We sacrifice time with our families, but now my kids are reaping the rewards out their butt. Now my <laughs> husband's like, do more. Wait, you're not working tonight? I'm like, no. Okay, can I just chill out tonight? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Megan, that's, and Megan, that's so important because <laughs> as much as that's almost a joke and we laugh about that, how many coaches do you talk to that say, my husband doesn't support this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And the reason they don't support it is because they're thinking like they're bros and like my bros, which are like, oh, Beachbody's a joke. Oh, you're doing uh, what? Cartwheels in your living room? Like that's your, that's your business? <laughs> Until you meet Megan. Until you meet some of these coaches. Like, and that's the one thing I posted the other day. It's like, I may not be the Beachbody millionaire, but I know them and they exist, and I'm going to be one, you know, and, and, you know, you, so you see that, and, but it's so important for you to say that, Megan, that's so important for this call, for people to hear that. Yeah. Because it's real. I mean, like, like you said, you're, I mean, your husband, I know he's a great guy, mm -hmm. but maybe in the beginning, he didn't agree, but now he does. I mean, that's a goal. That should be your, that should be a great goal for everybody on this call. I agree. I agree. And when people Honestly, say Josh, the friends and the family are usually the least supportive, yeah. which is, yeah. you know, like I can't even get my own mom to drink shake out. <laughs> my mom, I won't send her a coaching invite. <laughs> Just so, put it that way. When people ask me, Josh, how do I get my support to spouse me? My support to spouse me? That was not <laughs> really How do I get my spouse to support me? I always say work so hard that you can put a check in their hand that's so big and so fat they can't argue. That's Bingo. It. That's it. Yeah. I you think I said at one of our quarterly trainings, I said at first they're going to wonder why you're doing it, and then they're going to ask how. Right. Yep. It's beautiful. And why is family always the hardest? Because they're the ones that are going to call you on your shit, right? <laughs> they're, they're the ones. They're gonna, they, like, your friends are either going to just block you right. or not talk to you. And your family's going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? And, but like you said, prove it. I mean, just prove it. You don't have to tell them anything. Prove it. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll be there the whole time. Right. All right. Well, thank you guys again for having me on this call. I appreciate it so thank much. You probably so much. Awesome. So guys, so you can watch this call at some time. So I shared Josh's legacy leadership business page in the Philly fusion group. So let's go over there and just tell him how much we love him. I was also going to ask Josh, what is the best way everybody on this call can, can say, I just talked to Josh and he's the freaking man. What's the best way they can do that? Um, probably the best way would be to either tag my like page legacy leadership or just to tag my personal page and, uh, okay. you know, and, and, and okay. just say, Hey, this weird guy from Oklahoma talked tonight and made fun of Canadians and you should check out his training group. Josh, nobody gets weirder than me, dude. So <laughs> you're fine. You yeah, don't worry. It. You're, 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 you're a piece of cake compared to my weirdness. <laughs> I love it. Well, dude, thank you so much, man. This, and Megan, thank you so much. Oh, sure. This was incredible. Um, 
Philly really needed it, and we got it. And we're gl- I'm glad we got a recording so that we can share it with those people that couldn't get on. I know that's um, that happened. And Josh, as soon as um, as soon as you know we get that recording up, we'll, we'll we'll get it up. But everybody who's on this call right now, make sure you give Josh a shout out. Go to our uh, Philly Fusion page, check out his link, and then share that stuff. Um, and do me a favor and do Josh a favor right now. Whatever that number one note is that you wrote down, that number one thing where you're like, holy shit, that's going to make a difference. I want you to copy that and paste that in a status right now and, and then tag Josh in it. Because whatever, because if you just say, oh, I talked to Josh, you know, people are going to be like, okay, great, who's Josh? But tag that thought, whatever that quote is, whatever that thought is, provide that value to your timeline as a one, one free nugget. You know, from, from our guy, Josh, and, uh, and, and get people interested in what he's doing because what he's doing is so important. You know, he's not a beach body coach, but how much value did you get in the past, you know, hour and 45, right? It's, it's so important, and it's going to help your coaches. It's going to help the people around you, and it's going to get people interested in you as well just as much as Josh. So thank you again so much, and thank you, Megan. Um, sure. Other than that, real quick um, – <laughs> After this, I'm going live on the Philly Fusion page with an announcement about Super Saturday. That's all I'm going to say right here, an announcement about Super Saturday is coming on the Fusion page. So as soon as you jump off here, jump on there, and, uh, and I'll go live real quick. Megan, I'll give it to you to close it out. All right, guys. So, again, let's just make sure we give Josh all the love and say thank you. And I just want to say thank you again. I got double Josh time today, so that made me extra fuzzy, and now I have lots to implement. But – um. Josh, thank you so much for your time and You're welcome. And wisdom. Don't, don't forget your promise to me, 15 star. Okay. <laughs> I'm coming for you, 15 star. <laughs> that two weeks in the States. In two weeks, yeah. I saw it. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Thank you. Bye everybody.